Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional, Something Deeper. Thanks for joining me on this Saturday. I am looking forward to tomorrow. I hope you can be with us at worship at 10 o'clock. I'm going to talk about how to get to heaven. Today, I've been watching some news stories, and it's disheartening to see the conflict that rages around the world between different people groups. How can we ever come to peace? It's a difficult question, and I think the answer is only in Jesus. The worst recent example of animosity between people has been Hamas attacking Israel. And we heard this terrible stories of the terrorist attacks from the Gaza Strip into the nation of Israel, killing innocent civilians, men, women, and children, taking hostages, mistreating people, even killing them and burning them alive. Terrible things going on. Israel is going to attack and try and uh, take out Hamas and try and stop it from ever happening again. I don't know that they're going to be successful because how do you ever come to peace with people that feel that they have a right to take your life because of what's been done to them? I think it's going to be very difficult. We see these kind of conflicts around the world where everybody feels like they have a grievance. And, and maybe they do. And they use that to justify the hate that's in their heart. Even in our country, we see people that feel like they've been mistreated and discriminated against. And they feel like because of that, they have a right to hate others and to exact their retribution against others. And as long as that's the attitude of people, there's not going to be any peace. Because every one of us could say, yeah, in my past, my ancestors and my own life, I have been mistreated by others. And if I feel that I can hate those who mistreated me, or people who are related to them or look like them, if I feel like I'm justified in that, then how are we ever going to get past the the anger and division that we have with each other. There's no way to make up for past discrimination because even those who feel like they've been oppressed, you go back to other times and they were probably oppressors. White Americans took this country from the Native Americans. But the, the fact is the Native Americans that were there took it from other Native Americans. And it's just the way of humankind that people take what they can. And that's part of our sinful nature. And even the word slave, the word slave comes from the Slavic people of Eastern Europe, white people who were enslaved by uh, the, the Muslims in Spain, the Ottoman Turks, the Vikings, and many others. And so it's hard when you go back in history to have a fine line between the oppressors and the oppressed. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So how do we ever come together? I think Jesus had the answer in Matthew 5, in his Sermon on the Mount, starting with verse 43, he said this, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy, and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So Jesus' standard is love. He said the greatest command is to love God, and right along with that is to love others. And the way we love is to treat them as we would want to be treated. And the arena that we love in is all of mankind, every single person. 
including our enemies. We may think of love as kind of a, an easy thing. Oh yeah, I love people. But Jesus isn't saying we love mankind in general, in theory. He's saying we love our neighbors. We love the actual people that we come into contact with. And not just the nice ones. It's easy to love people who treat you well and do nice things to you. What really sets a follower of Christ apart from everybody else is the follower of Christ who loves those who mistreat him or her. He said, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? I imagine even Adolf Hitler loved members of his own group and family. Didn't make him a good person. But when you are able to actually love somebody who doesn't love you and wants to mistreat you or even does mistreat you, then you are an actual follower of the God who sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous, and the God who died for us while we were yet sinners, and the God who, as they drove nails into Jesus' hands, said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's the only way we can get past these lines of division. Maybe people see you as their enemy. If you're a believer... Don't look at them as your enemy. They are people made in the image of God that God wants to save, and you can pray for their salvation. Pray for God to change their hearts. Pray for God to come in and make them different. We can do that because we don't have to defend ourselves in these matters. We have a God who defends us, and he's going to make sure that our life works out. And so because of that, we can also be filled with God's love. I hope that you are today. Let's think about that. Let's do it. Go deeper with Christ. Thank you, Father, for this challenging but beautiful command. I pray, Father, that more and more people will follow it and that we will see peace come onto this world. I know the only time we'll have perfect peace is when Jesus comes again. But Father, I pray that we would be peacemakers in the meantime. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I love you all and hope to see you soon.